Hello everybody and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. It's been a week of ups and downs. The upside, I've got a Commodore VIC-20 to play with. Thank you very much to Lee, one of our followers who has kindly sent this to me just to enjoy. So the plan ultimately is to figure out if it works and, and if it doesn't, get it up and running and sort it all out. And of course, have a play with it. We've got some fun stuff to play with. Space Snake. There we go, yeah. So loads of stuff to do there. It's gonna be a bunch of fun restoring and repairing this old Commodore VIC-20. Thanks ever so much, Lee, for sending this to us. I feel like I'm teasing you, I'm sorry. So the thing that we have to do today is fix the volume control on my Compu, CompuCorder by Amiga. It's, yeah, it, it's a little bit, sick this cassette recorder and I'm sure many of you have come across the problems with volume controls on various different bits of equipment perhaps even old radios and that kind of stuff where you literally you wibble it and it crackles well clearly with a, a cassette recorder for a computer that doesn't work at all because uh, data is passing down those lines and the computer doesn't catch onto the data and one little wibble and that's it, it's game over. Restart the tape from the beginning. Another five minute wait for lemmings to load or something along those lines. So, so that's what we gotta to do today. We're gonna to get into that in just a few seconds. But what, <laughs> what I wanted to tell you about was my down. I'm giving you the ups and what we're gonna to do today. Here's the down. The down is I've been ripped off, I've been scammed. I've been scammed by a guy on Facebook Marketplace. He sold me a BBC Model B. <laughs> it never showed up. <laughs> I stupidly, I paid via bank transfer. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into all of the details in this video. I plan actually to make another video about that in the very near future, because there's a large part of me that really wants to call this guy out. I want people in the vintage and retro community to be aware of this chap, because uh, I certainly wouldn't want for anybody else to get caught out by him. Anyway, that's for a future video. Let's get this thing taken apart and sorted out. Okay, let me show you the symptoms. Pop a tape in. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Just lots of crackle and occasionally you get music. So uh, let's put it on the workbench. Let's get inside it and fix it. So being a data recorder, it has a five pin DIN on the side of it here. And this is so you can plug it directly into the Acorn Electron. There's also a mic earphone and remote start and stop here, which is used by the computer to actually start the tape spinning again at some point if it wants to. So it's quite a simple device. It's got a counter on the top of it and 240 volts 50 hertz little figure of eight type connector on the side of it speaker on the top i mean you know they're just uh they've got that lovely sort of creamy creamy look to it right i wonder if there's uh any leakage in the battery compartment ah that actually looks quite clean happy days okay well, there's a couple of screws in here that we need to undo and then there's a couple more at the top here that we need to undo i won't put you through me undoing screws okay so i've removed the front carry handle and then what i've done is just inside here there's a little catch uh, that connects the top half of the clamshell or the housing and what I should be able to, to do now, carefully knowing there's a speaker here. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, there's a little microphone here. I didn't notice that. Okay, so... So we, we've got in there, folks. We're in. We're in there like swimwear. <laughs> oh, and there we go. Bit of careful positioning. And we're able to lay all of that out on the table. So let's have a look inside and see what's going on. So this is just a regular two-head cassette mechanism. Uh, effectively, you've got a record and play head, this guy right here. And this guy right here is the erase head. 
And we have a capstan here, which is the thin pole, which is poking up. And this governs the speed of the tape. And then we've got here a pinch roller. So we should probably demagnetize the play and record head. And we should also clean the play and record head, the erase head, and the two, um, the capstan and the pinch roller. And then we should also have a look at the belts. And in fact, that's something that I've immediately noticed. Oh, ooh, oh my goodness. That belt has just turned to mush. This has the potential to get messy. Yeah, you can literally see in here. Oh my goodness. The rubber has just perished. That's the counter mechanism. Hopefully the play mechanism will be in better shape. But yeah, that's literally just turned into utter goop. So another couple of screws later and we've been able to very carefully remove the entire mechanism. What kind of state is this belt in? Oh, it seems a little bit slack to me, that belt. Thankfully it hasn't turned to mush like the other belt. My bag of many belts. <laughs> Let's see, what have we got? Well, looks like I'm going to have to order a belt for this. Never mind. The thing that we really need to fix at the moment with this particular cassette deck is this knobby here. So if I turn this over, there's a little screw on the top here. It's got a little bit of nail varnish on it, which uh, encourages the screw to stay in place. But if we remove that, we should be able to take the knob off and then we should be able to spray some switch cleaning lubricant inside this. Okay, with a bit of a gentle persuasion, we were able to break that little varnish seal, which has then given us the ability to pop this screw out. Come on, you. And then, there we go. Now we can see inside here, we can see the wiper and we can see the carbon trace. That little brass wiper, which has got a tiny little spot on it, that little brass wiper that runs around the outside there, needs to make contact with the carbon trace that runs around the outside of this. And with a little bit of luck, we spray a bit of contact cleaning lubricant in here, run this backwards and forwards, it should clean up the oxidation on the carbon track. Okay, let's apply a little switch cleaning lubricant. Oops. So before all of that switch cleaning lubricant evaporates, what we will do is we will just use this screwdriver to very carefully push that around. All right, that done. Let's get the lid back on. Get the screw back in place. So the heads themselves are actually in pretty good shape. I'm just using a little bit of alcohol soaked into this cotton bud here in order to clean those. We'll do the same thing here with the capstan. And, and then we will also do the same thing with the pinch roller. Now this is something that you can do when the tape player is in motion. But as you can see there, there's a little bit of dirt. So the final part of the process here then is to demagnetize that record and play head. So what I have here are two extremely strong rare earth magnets. I'm just gonna pop them on a screwdriver and one side will be north and the other side will be south. The idea is to spin this screwdriver rather rapidly in front of that tape head. So now having cleaned up the aftermath of the degraded belt and sorting out the knobby, let's go ahead and reassemble this lot. And 
then, <laughs> sadly, at this point, it all went horribly wrong. After I reassembled it and pressed the play button, some plastic fatigue had gotten to a point where, unfortunately, the play button has literally crumbled. In fact, pieces are falling off of it as we speak. I know I can try and glue this together, or perhaps even a 3D print another play button. But these tape decks are available on eBay for between 10 and 20 pounds. There's lots of them out there. So sadly, I think I'm going to have to go ahead and retire this tape deck. But there are a lot of useful parts inside this tape deck. The good news, <laughs> the volume control works nicely now. <laughs> I was able to play a tape for a very short period of time, feeling quite chuffed with myself. I thought, right, I'll film that. And as I press the play button one more time, just before filming, it snapped. There we go. Never mind. What are you going to do, eh? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. There it is, folks. The CompuCorder by Amiga. <laughs> the CompuCore by Omega, <laughs> not Amiga. <laughs> Thanks ever so much for watching. Don't forget, give us a good old thumbs up. Make sure you subscribed if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Have a wonderful, <laughs> Take care, have a wonderful weekend, people. Cheers and beers. Bye for now. <laughs>